Hey, once again, it is Monday night, and it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop's special show tonight because it's your chance to be on here. If you're in the chat room or if you're on Facebook yeah. or wherever it is, we're going to post the link yeah. to get on Zoom. All you have to do is click on the link and follow the instructions and put on your camera and your mic, and we'll do we'll be doing a fan roundtable. Plus, we got other stuff to talk about tonight. It's an important announcement, and... Lots of tech questions. We expect them. Yes. And we want them. And we crave them. So give them, let them at us. Yeah. All that coming up right now on Voice Over Body Shop. Two men. Twin sons from different mothers. With a passion for voice over recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no holds barred myth busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. All right, hey. it's a fan roundtable tonight. And uh, there's lots of people in our chat room. And if you look in the chat room, there is a link there. There is. And it says Zoom US J88 blah blah blah, 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 blah. If you click on that <laughs> link, it will take you to a Zoom chat where you can have your camera on. And your microphone, but turn your microphone off or mute yourself when you come in, and we will unmute you. And uh, what we want is your questions. We want your comments. We want your opinions on this show, as long as you keep it friendly. Uh, <laughs> it's true. This is this is not just about you know. We want to answer tech questions, but just a, just sort of a fireside chat about what VOBS is, what it should be, what it could be, and. You know, maybe things we can do better. So right. it'll be fun. Just a, just an open an open conversation tonight. Very informal. Right. Now, we do have to do the news, and then we yeah. have a big, big announcement that everybody needs to hear. We do. And and see. Well, they'll they'll see us <laughs> making the announcement they have to hear. <laughs> or something like that. Uh-huh. And uh by the way, gotta show you something I picked up at the flea market this week. I Let's love picking up old radios at the flea market. Toys. I found this guy. It's a 1956 um, Granco FM receiver. Yeah, with with it's somebody whoever had this put an antenna on it. This is the early days of component sound system gear. Remember when you it would buy just the tuner? It. You'd buy this, and there it goes. It's kicking. Yeah, it's. I hear it. It floats in and out, but it it does work. Do you hear it out there? Just barely. Yeah, yeah. But with the, the way this thing worked, this before in the early days of radio. Well, the early days of FM radio, radios didn't have an FM receiver on them. You had to buy a separate receiver. <laughs> That's the tuner there. And uh, there we go. Yeah. Now we're going to get pulled down for a violation of copyright. Yeah, really. Yeah, hopefully not. All right, good 
You get the okay, idea. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but this was a receiver that you would put on your, not necessarily your stereo, probably your hi-fi. Your old hi-fi set. It would have a, a, uh, an, uh, an auxiliary input into it, and there was your FM radio. I'll just push this antenna down. <laughs> the antenna whip is like from my radio control car days from the 80s. <laughs> we had that real long antenna. Yeah, really. If you were too ambitious, you'd press down and freak it right off. Right. You're all done. All righty. Well, I figured I'd show that off. I love to show. I mean, yeah, but the amazing thing was, is I'm like, where's the speaker? Oh, it's just a receiver. It's literally. And I plugged it into the stereo it. this morning and turned them up. Holy, look at that! <laughs> we can awesome. listen to NPR on this thing. My fun weekend experience was going down to La Jolla Ooh. and seeing my amazing, talented friend Danielle Talamantes, the accomplished soprano, sing with uh, with her husband actually, Carrie. Carrie is a is a baritone, mm-hmm. and they sang the Messiah. Yeah, so it was the four of them doing, wow. you know, they had the soprano, alto, tenor, and baritone. Wow. And then maybe 150, 200 choir members. Wow. It was orchestra? really cool. And a full orchestra. Okay. It was Not really, cheap to put those things no, on. No, it was an awesome experience. And, you know, they build it up so the soprano finally gets to come on stage right. after Jesus is born and everybody's right. all excited. And then she gets to sing. And, and she has experience singing at the Met in, in New York, the Metropolitan yeah. Opera. So her voice just... It was like a cannon compared to everyone. Like, it was so powerful. Nothing is more amazing than professional opera singers, the best of the best. Great we were all them. blown away. Martha Kahn was with us, oh, too. Oh, that's wonderful. And she has sung a lot of these, and she was impressed. We were all blown away. What a fun weekend. All righty. Well, let's get the show on the road. It's now time for... Voice of a Body Shop presents the VOBS Voice Over Extra News. All the information you need for a successful voiceover career. And here is the voiceover extra news for December 10th, Marketing Trends 2019. Well, here we go again, attempting to spot the trends for the year ahead, where everybody's apparently headed. And should you follow the herd? Well, two new articles on voiceover extra are both alarming and comforting. In this regard, let's start with the alarm. <laughs> Voice actor and coach J. Michael Collins takes a look at the entire voiceover industry landscape and, influenced by the release a few weeks ago of the Red Dead Redemption 2 video game, J. Michael sees our industry stuck in the early Wild West days. In that video game, he says law and order is more theory than fact, and those who don't keep their wits about them often find themselves. In a pine box. Well, the voiceover industry is a bit less cutthroat, he adds. And we tend to support each other rather than fire our Smith & Wessons into our competitors' backs. The black hat guys are easier to spot on our biz, too. Even so, he says, the evolution of the voiceover business bears a lot of resemblance to a world where there are few maps, fewer rules, and a lot of fool's gold. From a union that's not addressing our concerns to an online casting free-for-all to gurus who range from being truly career-shaping to peddling snake oil, there's no one-size-fits-all answer to how to get ahead. Or maybe there is. Well, keep your wits about you. J. Michael warns, stay ahead. And if you see the entire industry moving in one way, well, maybe take a look at what's down an opposite road or at least off a side path. And for now, comfort, some comfort at least, from Natasha Marchuvka, as she has been looking at trends and with an eye toward what marketing gurus and advertisers are predicting for 2019. Not surprisingly, she says there will be increased spending on digital video advertising. Yet much of her research points to this conclusion for Natasha. She says, everything I've cumulatively learned over the years still applies. Well, for instance, in marketing and all your business endeavors, endeavors, be professional, be brief, be remarkable. Diversify your revenue stream. Be authentic. It's the foundation of your brand and your message. And stay relevant. So, shall we sum up? Change is always in the air, but you already know what to do. Check out the details in these articles now at voiceoverextra.com your daily resource for voiceover success. Indeed, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed, indeed, indeed. Yes. Indeed. And now it's time for a big announcement. 
after much consternation, and I believe that's the right word, mm -hmm. and uh, George and I decided that, you know, we have been doing this show for almost eight years. Eight years in March. Almost every Monday night, eh, give or take 10 or so Mondays a year. Right. Uh, we've been doing this show. It's not easy to do. We work hard at it every week, starting on Friday night sometimes. And we bring it to you here on Monday night, every Monday night. What we've decided to do, in order to make our lives <laughs> just a little bit easier. Lives and things that rhyme with lives. Right. We won't say what. Uh, we are uh, going to change format a little bit. And first off, we're going to start go doing the show every other week, starting mm -hmm. January 7th. As a live show. As a live As show. As a live show. We're going to do a live show every uh, every other Monday night. Mm -hmm. uh, right. In the week following that, in the empty week, we're also going to send out uh, different versions of the show the prior week, where mm -hmm. we'll send out just the interview mm -hmm. and just the tech part. Right. So there'll be much more tech, which is the other format change we're going to make. We're going to start doing a lot more tech at the top of the sh well at the the second half of the show. Right for those that are there live. Right for you'll people. see the interview first. Right with our guest. With our guest, and that's going to start an hour earlier at five p.m. Pacific. Right or six p.m. Mountain, seven p.m. Central, mm -hmm. eight o'clock Eastern. Eight o'clock. Prime Eastern. time, baby. Yeah. So so, so that way our guest gets to come in, get their interview going. And, and then they can beat the traffic be out. Be free to leave. <laughs> and be yeah. home for dinner. Makes it an easier night for the guests. We'll be able to get better guests. We'll be having fewer, so it's sort of a balance of quality, quantity kind of thing, I guess you could say. Yeah. But it's it's going to really step things up, I think. But yeah. then, you know, after the guest is gone, we're going to just focus on tech. And right. we'll be able to talk tech freely for, well... We'll see for, for how long. long. That's we may, right. We may extend that section of the show. We'll see. Right. Which means we need your questions. That's right. We want your participation. We're going to need mm -hmm. your questions to drive what it is we do because George and I can talk about just about anything. Yeah. But if someone asks a question, we can go on ad infinitum <laughs> for days <laughs> or ad nauseum, depending on <laughs> ad nauseum <laughs> that, on that. Plus, another thing we want to do uh, mm -hmm. is we want to start offering you some really premium content, mm -hmm. uh, and that is paid webinars, uh, yeah. the things that you want to know about, real specific things that, you know, specific subjects that we teach, and we do incredible webinars here uh, in the Voice Over Body Shop studio, uh, and uh, we, want, we want your input on what you'd like to see. And we'll have uh, we'll have paid webinars that will you'll be able to get the recording of, and you will be able to create your own library of voiceover body shop webinars. Yeah, they're going to happen right here in house, and uh, we'll be able to keep a pretty constant schedule of content coming to you guys. I'm trying to do it once a month. Yeah, that's so, that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. So that's how we're going to survive into 2019. Mm -hmm. And I believe our first guest of 2019 is nobody important. Tara Strong. Oh. Is scheduled no, to be with us, and uh, and and we have Larry Davis, and we're going to really push to get the big people on here, and that means some big time agents, big time stars, uh, big time casting directors, influencers, the, you know, social media experts, right. and the people who can help you make your business, your voiceover business, succeed better. Yeah. So that's the big announcement. That's what we're planning. So you're all going. <laughs> no. Maybe not that big a deal to some, but uh, I, hopefully a, it allows us to bring you guys the, the really quality content. We really want to stay focused on quality for, for 2019. Right. Yeah. Okay. One more little piece of housekeeping. Yes. We, we want to do a fan roundtable tonight. That's right. That means we need your input and your participation. We've been putting the Zoom link in there. How many people do we have in the Zoom, Zoom right now? We've got a good number, actually. We've got right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 outstanding so we got a good number of queuing yeah, we can up go to there. gallery view and do the uh the brady bunch there for a little bit uh anyway we're gonna get to your questions and your comments and your thoughts right after these incredibly important messages <laughs> this is cat cressida as diddy from dexter's laboratory and this is voiceover body shop b-o-b-s b-s <laughs> wow this is V-O-B-S? Ooh, 
I think I heard the voice of a body shop. I did. I did hear the voice of a body shop. Beat old body shop. Hey, look, if you're on our mailing list, George and I have now sent you to three lessons in the voiceover booking blueprint. And David H. Lawrence, the 17th, told us he's now going to put it back into storage. <coughs> but first, he's got one more lesson for you. It's about you moving forward. And he's going to talk about two big elephants in the room. And towards the end of the lesson, he'll give you the details about his brand new VO2 GoGo -Go Pro Complete voiceover training. And the registration for that opened up yesterday morning. Here's where you go. HTTPS colons forward slash forward slash VO2GoGo.com forward slash 2019 forward slash R forward slash 31. Yeah, it's a lot to learn, but you've, it'll be uh, recorded. So you, and we'll have it in the chat room. Wait, yeah. Also, David just added a new Kickstart bonus only for those who register in the first 48 hours. It started yesterday and ends tomorrow morning, Tuesday at 9 a.m. The bonus is an exclusive private afternoon online session designed to accelerate your voiceover success in voiceover and will be open to you, only to you, if you act quickly. Once again, it's vo2gogo.com forward slash 2019 forward slash r forward slash 31. All right. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. And we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Doing it live to drive. That's right. Because we're too lazy to edit this thing. <laughs> Instead, we have somebody else do it. Uh, anyway, uh, okay, we'd like to get you on Zoom. And if you have a question to ask, write the question down in the chat room. On the VOBS.TV chat room. The VOBS.chat yeah. room. That way we'll, we'll know that you want to be heard. And That's right. And then we right. can go to you and bring you on with That's your right. camera and your sound. That's right. So... If you have a question and you want to ask it, we want you to ask it on cam. Yeah. So while you're doing that, we have uh, we have a, a quick question. A couple of Facebook questions. Yeah, that out. were thrown in early. John Badilla uh, uh, wrote to us. He said, is there a good tutorial for Audacity 2.3.0? And further, does the punch and roll feature mean what I hope it means for simplifying the streaming uh, VO narration audiobook recording? Please help. I think you both have done tutorials on Audacity. I know George did one on Twisted Waves, so did I, and I benefited from them. Uh, I'm a somewhat long-in-the-tooth VO guy hoping to restart some semblance of a business having dropped out of sight for a couple of years, though I realize the world has radically changed since I was a very busy freelance performer. Mm. Well, gosh, the, you know, as I, as I told him when he first wrote to us, it's like, well, you could always read the manual. Because, boy, there are a lot of details in there. Yeah. But you've you've done a, a webinar on Audacity. I've done one Long on Audacity. Ago. You can get them over at VoiceOver Extra. Yeah. Uh, I'm kind of out I'm kind of outdated on Audacity's new t uh, new punch and roll. Perhaps that should be one of the first ones we do as a VOBS webinar. Yeah, I would think so. Uh, but I I know there are a couple people who teach classes in it. I know Larry Hudson teaches one in Audacity. And David uh, H. Lawrence of Vio to Gogo is big on Audacity. Uh, he's right? yeah, certainly for audio. I would think yeah. if anybody would be jumping on the on the punch and roll method. It would be David H. Lawrence because he has been teaching his own variation on punch and roll recording using what he calls his stair step method or something like that for right. a long time. So I would imagine he's probably adapting it or at least learning how to use it. So right. um, it's going to come. We're just not on top of it quite yet. It's just too new. Yeah. 
Uh, also, Osin Audio has Punch and Roll, which works even easier than an Audacity. Yeah, we've been using the we've been using the Audacity or the uh, Ocean Audio Punch and Roll function for quite a while with success. So uh, it's it's to come. I I would imagine it was done with a lot of the voice actors in mind because the there's an Audacity Facebook group, and th- a lot of the features are coming out of that group. The requests for features like the Punch and Roll. Right. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of ways. I it, it is there punch and roll in in, in Audacity? I have certainly have version two point three. Two point three. Yeah, that's has. what he was. That's okay, right. that right. just came out with punch and roll. Yeah. That's the newest thing. Yeah, try it and go out and play. Yeah. All right. Are we ready to go to some questions and some comments and thoughts from our voluminous audience all across the fruited plain and various other well, places? Let's see what's in the queue. I've I think got, JDK has the first I've got question. JDK and is JDK in there? He, yes, is, he is. He is JDK. All right. I'm going to start by. Oh, he's already unmuted. Okay. And let me glue his camera so we can see it. All right. Spotlighting JDK. There he is, man of a thousand children. Thank you very much. That is me. (laughs) And they just keep popping up. (laughs) I have a simple question for you, and I know George has the answer because I know he uses one of these. I have a Yamaha AG03. And I repeatedly, you know, I turn it off when I'm not using it, but it's solid state, and I was wondering if I could just leave it on. Actually, Dan uses one or or did for a very long time. Right, we're using the AGO three. Um, it's now part of our our audio chain. It here is. It's part of the, the production oh. system now. Yeah. Uh, do you turn it on or turn it off? I mean, I, th- I turn it. I turn it off when I'm not using it, but it's solid state. I, Can I just I, leave it on? It, you, if it's solid state, you know, some guys never do that. But it doesn't have tubes in it, like, like, like this guy. You know, uh, <laughs> no, you can just leave it on. I left it on for like three years. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I it's, never it's gonna it it's gonna reboot every time the computer reboots, right? Or every time you shut the computer off, it will turn off because it's getting its power from the computer. computer. So unless you leave your computer on twenty four seven all the time, then it will not get restarted. So, but it doesn't harm it, and it shouldn't hurt it either to leave it on all the time. So I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. That's my question. Thanks, guys. Hey, man. Thanks wow. for chiming in. Yeah. We appreciate it. All right. One down. Uh, yeah, it worked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dave worked. Smith. Let's see. Dave Smith. Is he in there? Dave's was through Facebook, so he's not in the actual video chat. Okay. Tonight, so but we'll we, ask his yeah, question. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it anyway. Okay. He says, he says, I also have an AGO3. Awesome. It's yeah, popular. We I, Probably because we talked about it so much. That's a great unit. Yeah. Uh, when being Skype directed, is there a way to use the loopback feature or do I have to go with the Soundflower audio jack route? Well, that's the whole point, is that you can loop back using the loopback feature. There's that little switch on there. It says uh, channel one, two, and then I can't remember what the second one is. And then the bottom one, it's loop. And if you put it into loop, there's a little dial that you turn the whatever is coming back from the computer on. And you can you can play back stuff to who's ever listening, and you can turn up the sound from them as well. Right. And so, no, that's the that was the whole point of the AGO3 and the AGO6 is that you didn't need Soundflower. It did all the routing itself. Right. It works for playback. That's what it's good for. It, it doesn't mix minus. And what that means is once loopback is on, you're sending the Skype caller to themselves. So you only want to turn it on loopbacks for just for when you want to do the playback. As soon as you're done with the playback, turn it back to dry one, two, or mix mode. Don't leave it on loopback because it could cause some weirdness in the Skype feed. But yeah, that should that should do it for you. All right, all right. Let's what? Let's, let's, let's we need to see if somebody has questions. They're like they're there. Why don't we just go to somebody random and see what they have to say? Well, I mean, we asked them to put it in the chat, and yeah. Jack's mining the chat. So let's keep this pattern going with Kurt. Okay. Bonham, who says, coming to you from my newly built home studio, wondering about power conditioners and how important it might be to have one and where in my chain to put it. Now, Kurt is actually in the chat, so I didn't have to read that out loud. So now he gets to read it to us. And I think he had a follow-up question as well. Yeah, so I'm going unre- to unmute him now and spotlight his video. And there he is. Okay, fire away, Kurt. Hey guys. Answer it in your or uh, ask the question in your own words. Yeah. Now that I've done it. Yeah. Well, I've just like I said, I I just 
got into my new studio and of course I want it to be as perfect as possible and sound as good as it possibly can. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, I don't know if I need it or not, but I'm just wondering um, how important a power conditioner might be. I hear a lot of talk about it and uh, I'm also wondering if I was to get one, where in my power chain would I put it? Because I have my computer so, outside. So Kurt, something else. Kurt, will you do us a favor? Are you using a USB audio device for the? Uh, well, I'm using an interface. Is it USB? This is the thing I'm wondering. It, it just fell USB. apart. Yeah. It sounds absolutely horrendous. Oh, weird. Yeah. It sounds fine to me. Um, well, you sound you sound good to you, but to us, it sounds very uh, crunchy. Yeah. Um, so I was just asking unplug if you it. could unplug plug and it replug and plug your back the USB interface. Let me do that. Let me do that. It's amazing how this fixes things. Now watch this. It's amazing. Let's see what happens. That is as long as Zoom re reconnects to the interface. Right. Zoom may go, oh, I'll use another in in input and then he'll. All right, double check the input on the audio. But anyway, to answer the question, because I think we got the idea. Yeah. Um, a power conditioner, I'll tell you, they are all over the map in terms of price. I mean, some of them are like 50 bucks. Some of them are way over $1,000. I picked up one at a garage sale about five years ago. Yeah. It's right over there. Yeah. And it saved my tuchus last week. How? What did it do? There was a power surge. Yeah. And everything just went off. I'm like, oh, no. My power condition, because I tried to turn the power conditioner back on, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't it was, allow it to turn It on? was saying it was 130 volts. Oh, there was an over, yeah. Was so you had an over voltage coming right. in. Right. It was an over voltage. Wow. And it wouldn't start up. Yeah. And so I, we had to go outside, turn off the solar system, turn off everything. Wow. And, and then rebooted it, and then it came back on. Really? So contacted, wow. I contacted LA DPW. Mm -hmm. That's the power company here in LA, and said, what happened? And they're like, every time we are fixing or doing some maintenance, sometimes there'll be a power surge in a neighborhood, and that's what you experienced. Okay. So I think your question is dutifully, dutifully answered. A power conditioner is probably a good idea. Oh, it's always I mean, a good idea. If, at the very, very least, have a proper surge suppressor. There's power strips out there. They're not all going to be surge suppressors. It has to have a joules rating right. to be a surge suppressor. But the next step up is a power conditioner, which does what Dan's unit did, which is protect your equipment from over voltage. And the better ones have filtering to try to clean the power before it comes into your studio. It has a little broom in there. It yeah. Sweeps it. And the ones up from there have a voltage regulator that can take whatever voltage is coming in, whether it's high or low, and level it back out again. And they get more and more fancy from there. I, at the very least, surge of pressure for sure. Have right. that, at yeah. the very least. Yeah, I mean, not just a power bar, but a power yeah. conditioner. There, And where do you put it in your chain? You plug the plug into the wall, the and you plug everything else thing. into that. Yeah, it is the first thing in the chain. Now, if you have a UPS, most UPSs, those are the, the big battery backup systems, that can be the... That is also a power conditioner and surge suppressor right. in most cases. If it has something called AVR, I look for ones that have that feature. I like my power... Uh, UPS is to have AVR and true sign. So what that means is if the power is a little high or a little low, it automatically corrects it. Mm -hmm. That's automatic voltage regulation. If the power drops below the threshold, then the inverter kicks on inside and starts running on the battery. When it runs on battery, though, sometimes you get a really bad buzz. And so if it has true sine wave technology, true sign... Mm -hmm or pure sign, that means this, the power coming off the battery will be clean. So a couple little buzzwords to look for if you go shopping. Yeah. Mine's, mine's an old monster that was, you know, from Monster Cable, and it's designed for, you know, VCR, CD, you know, mm. all those things. Yeah. But it's powering my computer and powers everything in here, and thank God it saved me. It saved your butt, huh? It did. Nothing like a bad power surge. Wow. You know, and I thought, oh, no, my computer is gone. No, it just because it wouldn't reboot. I'm like, come yeah. on, reboot, reboot, and I'm like, oh, that's saying 130, 129 it's volts. Cool. Yeah, that display 
If it didn't have that display, it would have made it really hard to figure out. Right. You wouldn't have known that the voltage coming in was out of whack. Which is why I have one. Yeah, there you go. So uh, that's another thing like to look 50 for. 50 bucks at a garage If sale. you're looking for one, look for one that has a display that shows the voltage on it. Another thing to look for. They don't all have that. That's right. Yeah. So uh, I guess we could take a break, right, and queue up a few more. Yeah, that's right. But I like his blue microphone. I do. I do, too. Is it working? No, he has to, he yeah, has to, re, he has to reset I it. I think Zoom lost yeah. connection with his... Uh, his audio. That yeah. happens. Yeah. We'll have to find out more about that mic after the break, Kurt, because that's a... Uh, I think it's a sock. I don't know <laughs> what's going on with that mic. It's pretty interesting. <laughs> I want to know more. All right. All right. Well, we're going to take a break. Get your questions into the chat room. We want to talk to you. You you watch the show all the time. I bet you have a billion questions, but we also want your comments, your thoughts on the show, uh, what you'd like to see, and you know, you get your little soapbox to say what you want. I guess. Anyway, coming right up here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Don't go away. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. And we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Make sure you put your question in the chat room. But George is now looking back at the chat room to see what questions are on there. I know we got one from Paul Stefano. Yeah. Let's go to, let's throw it to Paul. Paul. We know his is and now taking you to live to Paul Stefano Studio. You're on, Paul. Sorry, I had to unmute. How you doing, guys? Doing great. How are you? I'm fantastic. So I had this this tech tip I got from another engineer slash talent, and I'm worried I might have conflated the information he gave me. So the gist is that there's a way to use compression during onboard processing in, in place of a gate or expander and sort of mimic the effect that a gate would have, but more subtly. And I've been using it first on the Apollo, um, the Universal Audio Apollo I have, and then also on the AGO 6 and it seems to do what I wanted to do. It, it mimics a gate, but it's not as harsh, and it doesn't cut off the ends of phrases as as harshly as a gate as, as you would think. Yeah. So, have you heard of this? Is this something that actually works, or am I just uh, imagining it? I, I've never heard of a something that's just an actual compressor, which takes a signal that comes in once it crosses a threshold, reduces the volume. I've never heard of a compressor doing that. I've heard of an expander which right. is sort of the opposite of a compressor. And there's also processing plugins that do both. For example, like in Twisted Wave, uh, the AU Dynamics processor has both compression and expansion. It's got both ends of the spectrum. Um, it's got Audition a, it's got has a pre, it too. Yeah, it's got a preset that says noise gate. Yeah, Audition or, has or it too. light gate, yeah, medium yeah. gate, you know, heavy, that sort right. of thing. And, you know, mm. gating, of course, is once the signal drops below the threshold, it just disappears. It's like turning off a switch. Usually a bad thing. We don't really never want to do that. But a compressor that can behave like an expander gate, I, I'm, that's not something I'm familiar with. So maybe the, pl the plug-in you're talking about has that feature built into it? I don't know. Well, I'm actually just using the onboard processing, the DSP processing for the AGO three slash AGO six, the um, the Yamaha. Right, right. right. which is only a compressor. Processor. Right. It's only a compressor as far as I know. But it so, does seem to do what I expected it to do. And what do you expect it to do again? I, like I said, I'm, I'm using it to mimic the, the function of an expander. And I just turn up the, the attack on and the release both to a really fast, fast number. Yeah. And and it does limit some of the background noise that I that I have issues with. 
Right. Well, I'm what, fascinated. I, yeah. That completely doesn't make any sense. I know. <laughs> well, we'll <laughs> like have I to said, play around with that and take like a look I said, and see. That's a trick I heard from another from another engineer, and he was using it with the the Manly Vox Box plugin on the oh, Apollo. Oh well. <laughs> Did the same thing there. Uh, but again, I was only using the the compressor feature of that particular plugin, and it does seem to do what he said it did. I'd have to so see a like a, I'd have to see like an on cam an on screen cast showing make, like I'll make what, you a video. Yeah, like a video <laughs> of what's going on, and then showing and seeing letting me hear the result to mm -hmm. better understand it because it yeah it's 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 kind of like saying I'm using a can of blue spray paint to paint my street red. And if I do it just right, it comes out red. Like I don't, I don't understand even begin to understand how to do it. So I'm curious. All right, More, maybe to I'll, be continued. I'll create something and send it to you. Awesome, that would be awesome, man. Right. <laughs> yeah. Now, Thanks. Yeah. Kurt Bonham also was confused about the loopback feature. Okay. He says I'm confused about what loopback is, and now I know I have it on my new Persona Studio 26. Ooh. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, every piece of gear is going to use have a loopback feature that works differently from each other, right. right? But essentially what it does is it allows you to play the audio from your computer, from the main core audio, right. back out the other way. Right, exactly. So It's a pure loop. And that's not always a, you know, if, if you're recording in Pro Tools or some kind of multi-track system where it's monitoring what you're recording all the time, that will create a horrendous feedback loop, right? Because you're... Yeah recording the Pro Tools output back to itself. So if you do do that function, make sure that your track is muted in your software. That will prevent a horrible feedback loop. So software like Twisted Wave or recording in, in waveform mode in Audition, there is no monitor loop. There's, mm. no, there's no monitor system that's automatically engaged uh, that's monitoring the input. Ah. So you don't have to worry about that, that problem happening. Yeah. You know what you forgot to do? Yeah, what's that? The source element spot. You're darn right. I'll have to catch it on the next break. Or, or should I just do it now, like right in the middle? Ladies and gentlemen, show. representing source elements, Mr. <laughs> George Whittem. Okay. Well, this is the best way to do an ad. I mean, they're going to love this because it's right in the middle of the show. People won't think to skip it. Uh, if, you, if, you're, if you are a voice actor or if you're a studio recording voice actors, why don't you already have Source Connect? You probably should have at least a working demo of Source Connect. And this is a way to connect your studio to any voice actor or any studio as a voice actor on the internet and get super high quality, high bandwidth audio with very low latency anywhere that you need to record it. And this is really a tool that's become mainstream now in the world of voice acting and, and studio production. It's very commonly found these days and it's definitely taking over uh, for... Uh, the likes of ISDN. Um, it's very reliable and it's affordable. You don't have to buy it up front. You can get it as a monthly license rental now if you like and pay installments. Whatever works for you. But if you do want to get it set up, you can get a free trial right now over at source-elements.com. Sign up. You do have to have an iLock account, but that's free. You don't have to have an iLock IS, uh, USB key. And if the whole iLock thing is mystifying to you, don't worry. I actually produced a tutorial on how that thing works for Source Elements. It's on the website. Thanks a lot for uh, sponsoring the show, Source Elements. Go check out Source Connect and tell them that we sent you. We appreciate it. All right. So what else we have going on? We have another question now. All uh, right. And this one is from, let me see if I can remember who that was. Ah, Kendall Campbell. Is Kendall Candle Campbell. Ken Campbell. Is he, he in there? He <laughs> is there. Put or she in this it's case. Tongue twister. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me put you up on camera. Let's see here. Do you have your camera connected, Kendall, or do you want to go My no cam is, tonight? I'm gonna go incognito tonight. No problem. Oh, you, can, okay. you can be audio tonight. It's fine. <laughs> but you sound great. Yes. You sound good. You sound good. Well, thank you. I Fire have an image in there, so you can yeah, you can kind of guess what I look like. Hey, so I am one of those odd ducks, and I'm a Pro Tool user. I use Logic Pro. It doesn't have to be specified towards this, but I have certain things that I want to keep my breaths in, but I don't want them to be as loud as they are because ah. it just makes it sound more natural. How do I lower the volume of said, that little bit of that breath while not affecting the rest of the volume? Ah, I got a great answer for that one. Awesome. Depending on what kind of stuff. Are you doing like audio books or just all sorts of stuff? 
all sorts of stuff, you know, just, yeah, really a, a smattering of different things. All right. Well, the, the best way to get rid of breaths, you, remember, you've got three options when it comes to dealing with breaths. Four, four if you like, you want to use software. I tend to believe that try, first, be careful with your breaths, plan them out very, very carefully. Uh, so that you are, uh, you know, will you read ahead and you're like, I can take a breath here, I can take a breath there. Make sure you're in good physical condition and that you can read an entire sentence without taking a breath. Yeah, random breaths are really hard to deal with. Yeah, When they exactly. pop up in the middle of a phrase or right. that kind of thing. Sometimes a breath, say in an audio book, might be something very dramatic and it actually needs to be in there. But if you take a loud breath in the middle of a paragraph or something like that, you could either just silence it, which nobody recommends because then it, you know, if you've got any background noise or something, room tone there's nothing. <laughs> the best way to deal with that is to highlight the breath, which looks like an egg on your, uh, on your, uh, your waveform and take it down 15 dB. It makes the breath sound far more natural and it doesn't cause any other problems. You're not lowering the audio anywhere else. You're simply lowering that one particular breath. Yeah, you have to go through the entire copy to do that. Uh, in Twisted Wave, you could probably do it using a breath finder or the silence finder mm -hmm. and stuff, and then take all of those down 15. But you got You really have to look at each individual breath because there are different volumes in, in different places. And so, but highlighting it, taking it down 15 dB usually is a really effective way to do that. And it doesn't involve anything really sophisticated. Yeah. Now, because you're on Pro Tools, there's some yes. fun things you can do too. Yeah. You could that's lay you could lay on a track that's nothing but room tone. So oh. record 30 seconds of really good room tone. Make sure there's no random noises in there. And what you're going to do is you're going to loop that. Now, I don't know. There's a, probably a production person on Pro Tools that knows how to loop something very easily. I think it might be pretty easy to do in Pro Tools. But you need to have a really long piece of room tone, longer than any chapter on your book. And you can have that on a track. So that room tone is just always there, right? Now, leaving your Pro Tools in shuffle, not shuffle, not shuffle, but slip mode, now you can go through and mute things you don't want. And the nice thing is that when that mute occurs, the room tone is still there because it's on another track. So that's another another way you could do it. It's kind of a interesting hack. And people think, well, wait a minute, if I'm adding room tone behind my voice that has room tone, isn't the room tone going to get louder? But it doesn't work out that way. Actually, the that white noise just sort of masks the other white noise, and it doesn't actually create worse room tone as a result. So you'll have to experiment with how loud the room tone should be. You don't have to listen to it and adjust the level, but um, give that a shot. I've heard of people saying that that works for them. So. Many roads to Rome. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks right. for your question. Yeah, if you got another question, you know, put it in the chat. Fire room. away. Right. Uh, I know, let's see here. There was a question here from, I know uh, Fred. Fred's voice was looking to get on here. Uh, Did he ask one earlier? Uh, he, you know, he He's says he has a question. He's not in the video chat. He's not in the video but chat. But if you have a question, we'll answer it. No question. Just a comment on how helpful you are on the show. Oh. I don't want to take up anyone else's time. Oh. we got lots of time, Fred. If you got yeah, a question, yeah, get in fun. there. But we appreciate that. I'm scrolling back through the, uh, through the chat room to see if there's any others that we missed along the way. Um, which, that was actually about how to join the show. Apparently, there's confusion about which is the Zoom room. I don't think there's more than... There's not more than one Zoom room. We've posted the link a few times. Yeah. Well, Doug, Doug is in there. We haven't talked to Doug in eons. Is Doug on? And Let's on... just throw to Doug. Yeah. Let's see if he's in there. Nope, Doug. You know what? True to form, Doug wants to be behind the scenes. Uh, hey, yo, I asked a question. Uh, is there any way I can get some help? Yeah, go for <laughs> it. Let us have it. I actually did post this. So this is a Manly reference microphone, and I don't know if you guys can help me or not, but uh, Manly wants me to send this thing and the cable and the power supply to them in California. I've got a phase problem. It's out of phase, and it was fine. It's a good microphone, 2700 bucks. Now, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I don't know how much you're going to charge me to repair this thing, but I can tell you now, I'm sure it's a lot. What's wrong? And with so, um, 
it's out of phase. Um, so I have a Sennheiser a 416 shotgun mic going into a Manly Vox box. Everything's fine, but when I hook up this guy now to it, uh, it's out of phase and it sounds really hollow. Is and I don't know how much you got to charge me. You know, I don't know why it's like that, but uh, uh, but it was fine. It was fine, and then it switched phase. Just it's out of random? phase. It's very hollow now. Well, that's bizarre. Um, yeah. That's the thing when you buy boutique handmade equipment. It's kind of like buying a high-end sports car, you know? It's, it's, they're the only one. It, actually, let's put it this way. This is analog gear. Yeah. You don't have, they don't, they're not the only ones that could fix it, but they're the ones that you know can fix it. I mean, there are mic well, shops I mean, all gonna, over town. Yeah, I'm going to go send it to anybody else. I mean, I'm going to send it to California, but I didn't know if anybody here that's, uh, you know, part of this uh, uh, session had any ideas or uh you know experiences that might be similar to where you know hey we know it's the mic or we know it's the cable you know uh because i at this point i don't know i changed the tube it never it didn't fix itself um you know i put another i got the shotgun the sennheiser 416 going into the vox box fine so i just don't get it it's a good mic it sounds so good listen that's the main reason everybody talks about that Sennheiser 416 shotgun mic, which is a good mic, mm -hmm. but I, I, cut, I cut some imaging with it um, over the weekend, and then I went back and listened to some stuff up against this Manly, and it blows it out of the water, so I need to get this fixed. I just didn't know if you had any experiences with regard to how much it might cost to get this no. thing fixed, because it's Christmas, and I don't yeah. really want to spend all that money. Yeah, I, I have never heard of anything like that happening, nor have I ever had ever had to have anything serviced by Manly. I've I've self-serviced one of their preamps where it was just a bad tube. Mm -hmm. If it's more than a bad tube, you know, I, it's hard. I can't possibly right. tell you what it's yeah. going to cost. But they're a good family-owned company. And, yeah. I'm, and I'm sure they take good care of their customers. And, uh, you know, and you've talked to the engineers there or talked to some of the service people there? I did. You know, Paul is their main engineer. He's really great. I'm friends with Havana on Facebook. And, you know, they all, you know, I mean, I think... Uh, when I got into a conversation with Havana about it, she felt like she thought, I think, because she was trying to walk me through what to do, is I think she thought I bought it and it was like that, but it wasn't. It was, it was, it was fine. I think you even stumped Ivana. Because <laughs> yeah. now I've got to send this thing to California. Can't yeah. wait. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. That's that's a real bummer when, especially when you decide that it's the mic for you. And now you can't use it. That is a, that is a right. yeah. I can tell you now that the difference between that and that 416 will blow you away. When it goes into that Vox box, I didn't realize it was that huge, but it's that big, guys. Yeah, yeah. really. That was the Don LaFontaine mic. So. Yeah. yeah, yes, it was yeah. in a world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but a 416 is pretty good. Actually, somebody asked me this morning. Um, a good friend of ours. Thanks for your question. Yeah, by so the way. we really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, was talking about what would be a good road mic to have that's not a 416 but a shotgun mic. And he said, you had mentioned the AT-875R. Mm. Okay. And yeah. while it's a good mic, is it a 416? It's certainly good for not. the money. But it's good for money. It's certainly it's a lot lighter. It's a, it's a lot cheaper. I call it a stunt mic. Yeah. Uh, You're not so worried about it getting broken or lost. Or <laughs> which makes it a great stolen. road mic. <laughs> yeah. So there are mics between the AT875R and the 416 that maybe are a little bit more 416 like. In fact, one mic that we've been talking about on my podcast, the Pro Audio Suite, is the Rode NTG3. No, strike that. Rode Dang. NTG4, not the 3. The 3 does not sound like a 416, but the Rode NTG4 does. And when you turn on its high boost function, it it sounds a lot like a 416. It's about 300 bucks. Yeah. So that's a, a nice alternative. Still too. cheaper than a 416. Quite a bit. Another Although, stunt mic. Option. I use a 416 in my studio, and I had I had to do a project today uh, that was to replace some slides on something from four years ago. Mm -hmm. And now that would have been in my studio in Buffalo. And I'm like... Gosh, what mic did I use on that? You, know, you really should write these things down. I'm uh, doing you know, these <laughs> right. four sixteen. Yeah, but yeah. I didn't see it here from this client for four years, and I jumped into my my new booth here with the four sixteen. Could not tell the difference without any processing, without anything. God, it sounds wow. exactly 
the same. So I That's must have used amazing. the 416. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Anyway, we want your questions. We got lots of time here and we got lots of bandwidth and we want you on Zoom and we want to hear your questions. So throw them in the chat room and uh, Jack will get it to us and we'll take a break right now and uh, get more of your stuff. And especially if you have any comments on the show, we'd love to hear those too. So we'll be right back here on Voice Over Body Shop. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there in the trenches doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success. In one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the Home Studio Master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. All right. One of the people that's been with us since show one is Harlan Hogan. And one of the great things he has is his signature series products, the yeah. VO1A microphone, which mm -hmm. I know a lot of people are using. Yeah. And it's a great microphone and a great price point. Proven track record. Right. And if you go over to voiceoveressentials.com, you'll see that. But you'll also see something that Harlan is very proud of. Yeah. And you are wearing them now. These are the new Harlan Hogan Signature Series Headphones version 2.0. The 2.0 headphones. I've been using the 1.0 headphones for, well, since they came out pretty much. We've been using them in the studio here. And these take that idea and just tweak it a bit. You know, right. They have a, the same general shape, but he's improved some of the materials the headband is softer, yep. which, trust me, you wear a headphone for a few hours, you appreciate it. It's it's more comfortable to wear. The ear pads are a little deeper, and so they they don't press on my pinna, this part of the that's, ear. That's your pinna. This okay. is a very sensitive part of the that. ear. Headphones that press on that, for me, are uh, uh, not uh, not fun to wear for a long time. <laughs> These, I can wear for a long time. and I've, their Their sound has changed a bit, too. So the first ones were very smooth and just had almost a flat, dull sort of top end. These, he brought the top end back a bit more. I'd say these sound a little bit more, maybe more familiar to people that use the Sony headphones or the Audio-Technica headphones. Not as harsh as the Sonys or bright, um, but a, kind of a nice Goldilocks. Um, I hope to compare them against some other favorites of mine uh, in the future, but yeah. Great cans. Yeah, really I, nice. I listened to them. They clearly were a little louder, a little higher output, a, a little more, yeah. a little more present. Yeah, and you know, but they're still really, really flat. Yeah, they're Meaning not. They're, they're not hyped. They're not no. overly bright or overly boomy. There's or, no color to it. They're it's hyped. They're what hyped. it is, what you sound like, which yeah. is why they're designed the way they are. They come with this nice bag. Yes, and it also has a a great feature. If you happen to walk away still wearing your headphones, it has. This little thing oh, crap. that pops out. No it's problem. Just, it's just a sub mini plug, and it plugs yeah. right back into the headphone, and that will save you, you know, because soldering those things is a pain in the butt. Yeah, no, I, I, I appreciate it. There are, there are other headphones that have detachable cable, but most of them, the cord goes in and twists and locks in place. So, yeah, they're detachable. But <laughs> you'll still damage something. With this, it will actually pop we'll out. Break, yeah. But they chose to make it a very tight fit. It, it's it's actually, it doesn't slip in easily. It really, like, listen, it goes. Ah. It makes a very solid click when you plug it in. So Outstanding. Nice job, Harlan. Yeah. Good job on the revision, I have to All say. All right. And where do you get them? VoiceOverEssentials.com. And the mm -hmm. best place to get yourself there is... After the show is over, go down to the bottom of our homepage here and click on the picture of Harlan Hogan talking into his uh, vaunted uh, Portabooth Pro, and that will take you right there. Let him know that George and Dan sent you there. Thanks, Harlan. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. 
VOBS.TV. We are back. At least I thought we were. Good crowd in Zoom, and right, they got lots of questions. Why is that? The audio went off when I switched it on. Okay, take it again. And take two. And we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop, and uh, we see that we have a large crowd in the Zoom room. Awesome. Along with our chat room. Flooding in. And we love getting those questions, and so let's get back to those. Uh, Let's go to Dennis Oberhofer. Dennis, are you there? I'm unmuting his mic. Come in, Pittsburgh. I am. There you go. Hey, how's it going tonight? (laughs) Oh, nice hat. Obviously, someone in the Northeast. Yeah. Bomber hat. And in his backyard. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm in my garage, actually. My my booth is a uh, converted um, uh, sauna that I actually have in my garage. Nice. Which is also <laughs> That is cool. Also the, I hope to show you my booth uh, soon uh, after I've completed my, my revisions. Clearly turn the heat on in there. Get the sauna going to get warm yourself up a little bit. <laughs> do actually and the rest of the, the garage is quite cold it's also the only place my wife will let me smoke cigars so uh, <laughs> holy cow <laughs> what's up tonight <laughs> well um, i met you guys at uh, uncle roy's barbecue which was awesome uh, it was. meeting you guys as well as the barbecue so thanks uncle roy and um yeah i actually have a couple of questions for you um Number one is I finally picked up a uh, 416, which was, you know, kind of on my dream list and figured I'd evaluate it and see how it sounds with my voice. And um, I'm loving it. I'm loving everything about it. Um, and I've watched uh, several times, um, George, your your uh, Edge Studios uh, uh, bit on um, where to position microphones oh, such yeah. as this. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and it includes the 416. And uh, I'm... I'm finding that I actually have to get quite a bit of gain. Um, you can see where it is here. I've positioned my Hero 4 so that you can see more of my booth here. Um, so, you know, I've got the, the six inches here. And I'm at about three quarters gain, which seems hot for a microphone like this. Um, what, what interface are you using? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, it's the Scarlett 2i2. Ah, well, there's a little bit of a null zone in there at three quarters you can take it up another half a notch or so, and that will give you that. That's really where the sweet spot is with that that preamp. Uh, so if you take it up a little bit more, you're not going to be over. You're not going to be overdriving the the preamp on it. Yeah, I find it yeah, pretty. I, I've I heard pretty common to go that. above three o'clock. Be three three and four o'clock. Is that where you are now? No, I'm at. Uh, oh yes, I, I guess so. I, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm at, at about three. No, it's it about right. Seems... Yeah, you can take it up just a hair. Uh, it just seemed pretty hot for it's not this. it's not considering it starts at five o'clock yeah yeah i mean most of these most of these uh mic preamps built into the interfaces they only have about 50 db 45 mm-hmm. to 50 db of gain and to record voiceover a uh, speaking voice you need 35 to 40 db of gain so that's going to be almost all the way up three quarters of the way so not unusual yeah okay I, Good. Uh, yeah, I was worried about that. And um, it actually seems to be clipping a little bit now, but uh, that's probably because I'm excited to talk to you guys. <laughs> um, my, my second question, if I may, please, um, is, uh, oh, and a quick uh, shout out to Mark Scott and his 12 Gifts of Christmas. If, if you guys haven't checked that out, uh, I think I saw that some of you guys have uh, uh, your names on there. Cool, cool. Um, it's a really interesting thing, and a bunch of guys, people like Uncle Roy and others, have, have donated gifts to that. So nice. um, I think that's a fabulous thing that, that folks should check out. Uh, just a quick tip. Um, so my other question is about, you can see my monitor here, and I've got it uh, set up in portrait mode. Um, I've got weak eyes. Oh, and, yeah, look at that. <laughs> so it's, um, you know, my only regret is that it's not a... Um, uh, touch screen so you know that's that's next on my list yeah um but uh set up i've set it up this way for a couple of reasons one is um it, it it'll allow me to get my my head up um uh, still speaking toward the microphone without popping directly into it um i think it's good positioning in in terms of where the copy should be and and allows me to manage my interface as well because it's got a lot of real estate um and i've angled it down a bit in an effort to try, and by the way, this is all Roxel. 
uh, my interior treatments. Uh, yeah. with, with it sounds power. pretty. It sounds pretty good yeah, there. It sounds Dennis. pretty solid. You know, on. We're getting some Something. glitchiness tonight, but I think that's a Zoom thing yeah. and nothing else. There's just yeah. some glitchiness. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's my chain. My chain is pretty clean. Yeah. So um, I guess the, the question is more of a theoretical one in terms of what do you do with monitors? How reflecty are they? I would imagine a lot because yeah. it's just a big sheet of glass. Um, and, you know, is it better to tilt it down Yeah. And tilt it up? Ac tilt actually, it, interesting that you should mention that because if you really – Put your finger on the monitor, you'll see that it's not glass; it's plastic. You see mm -hmm. how it flexes a little bit because mm -hmm. it does. It's not like a mirror; it's not like a, a a hard piece of glass. It actually absorbs a lot of the sound, believe it or don't. And I've and I've used a monitor in my studio for a long time. I decided to go back to paper, so I'm writing things down in my scripts again. Uh, but having a monitor, especially if you can't see. And so I'm going to assume that you have a vision problem and you like having those big, you know, the big letters in front of you to read. Uh, a monitor, if it's too close to the mic, yeah, it might cause a little bit of a comb filter, maybe. Yeah. But I have never noticed that before. Uh, and that the screens are not glass. And, yeah, you can angle it a little away and, and bounce yeah, it up. just avoid the bank shot. So, you know, draw an imaginary line from your mouth to the screen, back to the mic. And just make sure that that screen is in such a way that it wants to re reflect the that sound right back at the mic. That just requires Stop turning it slightly or <laughs> slightly one way to the left or the right, maybe a little bit down, but whatever. I think that's clever there. You must be on Windows? I am on Windows, yep. Yeah, because I don't know if easy. Mac can, can... Do you know if Mac can run monitors in vertical portrait mode? Uh, yeah. I've never tried it, but I should. That's... A, Pretty cool idea, actually. I like that. Yeah. It's a cool use of that space. Big monitor in a small room. Yeah. Yeah, and I've got the small monitor as well for the, the laptop. And um, so, you know, it's multiple monitors, so I can keep my, my DAW down here. Um, so, yeah, okay. So I, I, was, I was mostly concerned with the reflection bank shot yep. back into the mic, especially, you know, considering. We're not hearing it too much nice. here, at least. No, no. Yeah. No, I'm, we're not well, hearing much bass reflex or anything. Plug for you guys. I'll be sending you a uh, sample, either in a specimen cup or otherwise. Uh, I'll, I'll be sending it to one of you guys. I won't tell you which one um, <laughs> for, for evaluating my sound. So yeah. uh, awesome. I, I love Thanks, your man. services, and, and I look forward to using them. Thanks, Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning Thanks, in. Thanks, Dennis. We appreciate us. it. All right. Fred North has a comment. About I'm hockey pucks. Hockey puck. Having been a goalie, I don't like this question already. <laughs> <laughs> Fred, are you there? Fred, with us? there's Fred North. We see him every week in on the chat room, but now we see his face. You're on. <laughs> well, first of all, shout out to the sponsors. Uh, let me a little shout out to sponsors here. Yeah. Hey, how are you? Nice mustache, by the way. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Who's there talking in the background? I think Dennis is probably still, his mic might still be open, so I'll go ahead and mute his. Okay. See if there's anybody else. Nope. Okay. You're good to go. Well, I'm, I'm a long-time viewer. I think we're getting looped back. Do you have your show's audio feed still right, well, turned on, I'm a long-time viewer, two-time show yes, visitor. Yes. Okay. All right. Don't. All right, Fred. My booth tur is tur set turn on... off. Turn off the audio that you're listening to on your, uh, on the. Uh... There, how's that? That better now? Yes. Can you I hear us you now? And do you hear us in real time on Zoom? He may not hear us on Zoom. That could be a problem. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So ask your yeah, question. I got you. you got me now? Yeah. Yes, sir. You got me now? <laughs> I think you might be listening to the show on YouTube or Facebook, not no, on, on Zoom. Zoom. Okay. My booth is uh, seven feet by five and a half by seven and a half, two by four wall construction. Had some vibration from below. Okay. He's suffering from a major, and, major uh, lag. And George suggested setting it on hockey pucks. Working great, George. Oh, good. I'm glad it's working, man. Thanks, Fred. <laughs> I think the problem is I left my stuff on upstairs. I'm downstairs in my booth. So I'm going to get off here and I'll watch the rest. That's, I'm glad it works. Okay. Thanks, Fred. Have a good night. Cool, cool. All and right. Paul Stevano has another thing about is there a booth fan that's quiet enough? Let's go back okay. to Paul. Paul, fire away, man. We're ready for you. 
Hey, so yeah, I have a question about booth fans. I tried a few that I've, I've built myself, one from a computer fan, one from a, a duct, uh, inline duct fan, and yeah. both are still really too loud to hmm. record with. Yeah. Is there something that you know of that you can actually either turnkey solution that you buy off the shelf from a, from a vendor or something you've built that you know that works quite enough to run while you're recording? Yeah, well, you know, the computer fan, I mean, it depends. Uh, first off, when we're talking about ventilation in your booth, it's important to understand something, and that is the, the acronym CFM. Cubic feet per minute. How? What is the dimensions of your booth? I'm in a four by four whisper room. All right, four by four by four times six, seven uh, six eleven. So how many cubic feet is that, Mr. Four times, four sixteen yeah. times seven is seven seventy, about a hundred and twenty ish cubic okay. feet. Okay. Yeah, most of these fans are rated at you know around a hundred cubic feet per minute. If you've set up the ventilation system correctly. Uh, and you're moving, changing the air in that booth every two minutes, you're not causing yourself any problems. So you don't need that much in draw, you know, from the fan to exhaust gas inside your, your booth as you think. It needs to be a slow fan. Right. Where are you getting the two minutes from? Uh, because if you have a, if you have a fan that's 20 cubic inch or cubic foot booth, and you have a fan that does 60 cubic feet per minute. And it oh, takes okay. two minutes yeah. to exchange the the air the air in the, in the booth. Yeah, and you know, I mean, your your the accumulation of CO two, it's going to eliminate it if you've got if you're drawing cool air from your office or from wherever, it's going to maintain the temperature in there. CF fan. Okay. So the problem is most of the fans that you buy are designed for too many CFM, and they're not designed to be totally silent. And the only way to get a fan to be quiet is for it to be really big and really slow. So like this is one that Dan ha happened to have laying around. This yeah. is a, a laptop cooler fan. It's so, USB powered. Yeah, it just lays underneath the laptop. Um, when this thing's spinning, actually, let's, let's see what it, it looks like. I, don't, I venture to guess it doesn't spin all that fast. It's not a very good one, so you can hear it making some noise. But, oh, it doesn't want to be vertical, that's yeah. why. Yeah. It's spinning... I mean, I don't know the speed, but I'll tell you, it's not spinning very fast. And let's see if you can hear it. Let me hold it up to the mic. It'll blow air on the mic, but... If it's a good one, it's not vibrating or rattling like this one is. Because it's so large, it doesn't have to spin all that fast. And because it's spinning slowly, it makes less turbulence. And it makes less noise. And that's really so, what's causing the noise is not the fan itself, yeah. unless you've got a really loud fan. Uh, and that is the movement of the air through the ducts. Yeah, the velocity know. of the wind blowing through. Right. It becomes and, audible. And, and what is the plenum that is drawing the air through like? You know, are you like isolating it with, you know, like, is it going like this? Do you have something inside the, the plenum that is deadening the noise as well. Yeah, with the Whisper Room, they, you know, they're not using an axiom about size of duct to cubic feet per minute. The duct is on the small side. It's, I think it's four inches. The yeah. vocalbooth.com uh, Platinum, their high-end one, uses a six-inch duct. And then they have a fan and a huge silencer unit outside the booth. Those things combined make for a really quiet ventilation system. I've been very impressed with what they're doing but yeah we have to find fans that we can slow down right or put a fan a large fan like that on a box just make a wood box and attach well, I've that i've actually done that now i, I run mine it's, it's not a whisper room brand fan I, I built it out of a some some dryer duct and i do have a box outside but the fan i'm using is spinning way too fast so like it's, i said it's an inline duct fan that's just a rocket ship yeah that's yeah. probably the opposite of what you want you want a larger slower moving fan Something that's maybe less than a thousand RPM, you know, maybe yeah. not not a very fast fan. Right. Do yeah. a little shopping online. I I've done some shopping for computer case fans, and a little bit of research. You'll actually see some websites that give you um, uh, DB ratings, 
Sones. CFM Sones. Sones. Sones ratings and things like that. Yeah, it's, just, it's, it's the rating they put on bathroom fans. Yeah, you can find some information. It's essentially the there. same thing. Bathroom fans are a little louder because they really have to they have to move a lot of air. Yeah. But you don't need that much cubic displacement of air as you think you do. In a really to, small room. Yeah. 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 Especially a really small room of 120 cubic feet. Right. Does that answer your question, Mr. Stefano? It does. Thanks as always. All righty. Fantastic awesome. stuff. All right. Jay Charles has a question. Let's get Jay in there. All right. Going to turn on his camera. Jay. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? We can indeed, and we wow. can see you. We've had a good track okay. record tonight so far with yeah. getting you guys on. Yeah. How you doing? Yeah, very well. And you? Excellent. You guys? Very good. Okay. Two questions. Uh, first... Plus one on the giant size monitors. Got a big 55 inch 4K one right here. Nice. <laughs> Got to be able to see. Got to be able to see, you know, especially for me and my eyes. Question Got a uh, TLM 103 right here. Mm -hmm. And the only time I sound clear and clean is when I'm straight on, a, straight in front of it. I see. I keep seeing videos of people who have it off to the side. What is the optimal precision for that? Mm. Well, uh, for the 103, all right, now I can. I can pull this mic down just to, a little bit, just to give it a slight idea of how you're... I know I'm making a lot of noise here. The 103, how bad is it if I'm doing this? You know? Oh, it's terrible. Okay, good. All right, all right. <laughs> the 103, you really don't want to be talking too much off-axis, but you also don't necessarily want to be talking directly in the diaphragm. And mm. what you may think is clear may be what you like as clear. Uh, I, George and I have been talking to people about microphone placement for a good long time and how that is far more vital to how well your mic sounds as opposed to the actual model. Now, the 103 is a really great mic. Uh, and one of the reasons is it's extremely sensitive, meaning that you can back off of it and increase the gain and it's going to pick you up pretty well. My standard for, yeah, my standard for mic placement generally is the bottom of the mic at the bridge of your nose and five to seven inches away about like that. And as you can hear, it sounds like I'm in the same room with you. This mic is going to pick you up like that. This mic has a very similar capsule to a 103. Actually, it's more like a, a, a U87 capsule. And uh, tell it, us more about your yeah, space, though. Yeah. How, how, how high is the ceiling above you? We've lost his audio. Sorry, that's me. Okay, that was, okay. it was his fault. Sorry, right. that was my fault. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's an old house, uh, carpeted floor, uh, not too high ceiling, maybe eight to ten feet, and uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of equipment. There's about three computers sitting right over here. Uh, would you believe I get about a negative six to seven dB noise floor? Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Because um, I don't have this gain turned all the way up. I just have it on the DBX2 86S uh, using only the gate function on it because it's really good. It's the best I've heard so far. Yeah, I wonder if because there's a large, large display not so far away from you, I wonder if when the mic is sideways because it the 103 has a wide pickup pattern. Right. And I'm wondering if when it's more sideways, you're getting a mixture of your sound off bouncing off that big screen with what's coming back uh what's with what's what's coming out of your mouth i i that's just a total guess here we would have to hear what, it. I, what I feel like i'm missing is the high end yeah if you I want feel like to miss the high end when i'm off axis though. Well, that's true the reason that happens is because as you go more off axis from the mic you're attenuating the high end you're making the mic less bright in fact, I'm talking into the side of the U87 right now, and it sounds fine. It sounds okay, but as I start rotating the mic toward me, all of a sudden the back, the top end comes back, and now I'm getting the brightness of the mic again. So that's when you're turning the mic sideways, that's what's going to happen. But you can still okay. have the mic close to your mouth, but say have your mouth facing this way, and the sound of your voice is going this way, the plosives is going this way, but the mic is still pointing generally toward the mouth, and you should still get a pretty bright sound. It's still not going to be quite as sizzly sharp as when you're directly directly on the mic. So you okay. may have to compensate a little bit uh, with that. But at the end of the day, put the mic where it sounds good. 
Um, okay. Don't worry about what anybody else tells you. Put the mic where it sounds good in your studio with your voice and your setup, you know, because they're all going to be different. Do you have time for another question? Of course yeah, we yeah, do. We do. I think we got time. Well, I apologize if this opens up a can of worms or sends you two off on tangents that will rile the days you of have your muscle. can opener. I do, as a matter of fact. My <laughs> can opener is over here. <laughs> but I need you to talk me down. There's been all sorts of rhetoric on the internet, and which is obviously a great place for it. Uh, as to which camp you're going to fall in. Are you going to be with the freelancers and the play the plays or the agencies and whoever is this? Case in point, I'm not in Hollywood. I'm not in New York City. Right. I'm just fine doing corporate jobs. I, I, I'll i I'll do it. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, if I keep hearing from articles, blog posts, podcasts, like if you even think about doing, joining this site or that site, you're blackballed. Nah. I, even, I read it from uh, Jay Michael this morning on uh, one of his blogs. I'm like, wow, really? Now, I'm, you got me too, Black. I don't know what to do. Mm. All, right. All right. Being the, the one of the two of us that's actually a professional voice actor, um, and having been on all the pay-to-plays at one time or another, all the major ones, if you're starting out and you're building your business, where else are you going to get auditions from? Aside from doing all your own marketing, which you should be doing anyway. Um, there's one particular pay-to-play that many of us have a major problem with. We won't mention any names. Uh, but I do know that the other major one uh, just went through a new, uh, they just redid their, uh, uh, their format. Uh, I heard some rumblings this morning about it. It's not exactly what they said it was. Then again, people have to get used to the platform and mm. to see how, how well it works. Uh, I would say, you know, stick with one and the one that you know is honest and is not acting as a middleman and taking your money and double dipping and managing the jobs. Uh, you want to be you want to be it to be a direct conduit between you and the, and the, the client. Uh, so you do all the negotiating, and and that's that's the most important thing. Would you say it's good to have a platform that that I think to reiterate, a platform that allows you direct communication with, with the, client. the client, not right. a platform who puts up a wall right. between the two of you, right? Exactly. That's a good way to maybe. I, I, that, that's a good way to explain that. Trim and, them out. Yeah. Uh, are they all bad? No. Are there ones that are good? There are some that are very, that, you know, really do like and, and take care of their customers. Uh, I mean, they're not there as social service organizations. They're trying right. to make a buck as well. Yeah. But they also are very good at, uh, at, at making sure that you're represented properly at their site. And, uh, you know, do your homework, find out what people are saying. But if someone just poo poos it all the way around, then they really don't know what they're talking about. I know there was a, a there was a long thread on Facebook the other day, uh, like who who does stuff from their home studio? Well, like ninety five percent of the people are doing it, like ninety percent of the time, right. because someone had commented that those with home studios aren't doing real jobs. Well, they only insulted the entire freelance market out there. Was said by... voice was said person from another country by chance? No, said person was somebody in Hollywood. Okay, yeah, because I know... somebody who only works in other studios. And stuff like that. I know in other some other countries, there's maybe a there are there's a slower uptick or uptake of upset, accepting professionally produced but home recorded stuff. Like they still, uh, my co-hosts on my podcast are from Australia. They said it's it's really they they lag behind in the whole home studio thing. Looking at the home studios is still not totally pro, right? Which I found. Bizarre and fascinating. When you I consider mean, some of your clients who are yeah. big time voice actors like mine, my, some of my clients are, they're making money. A lot of them are making good money next to their yeah. pants and shoes and underwear. Yeah, I was so, quite surprised about that. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, some people just have an attitude about it. Yeah. But yeah. the good people in this business support each other. So, Aces, wonderful. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, Jay. Keep up the great work. All righty. Thanks for joining us tonight. Well, there's a few more people in the room that haven't asked questions. Should we just do a last two-minute fly around free for all? Let's, and let's say go around the horn here. All right, I'm going to unmute everybody. Everybody that's in there, I'm going to unmute your mic now. James, Jay, Charles, Melanie, Paul, here we go. So let's see, unmute all. All participants are 
unmuted, even though it says they're muted. That's fascinating. Oh. All right. Who's in there? Paul. Paul, we hear James. Paul. Hello. If uh, you want to say hi, say hello. Hello. James, where are you, man? I'm in New Jersey. Jersey. Right on. <laughs> which yeah, exit? George, you yeah, which exit? Met, <laughs> uh, I have never met uh, uh, Dan live in person. Uh, I have a processing question. Okay. Oh, cool. Go for a it. A mutual friend of ours is fond of, I'm doing a lot of audiobooks, and a mutual friend of ours is big on uh, serial compression. And uh, I'm good. using uh, Neutron Advanced, Isotope Neutron Advanced with the uh, track assist on it. And what it does is it puts compression in series. Yeah. But it seems to to do some funky things i'm just wondering if you guys had an opinion on that well if you don't understand what it does you may not want to use don't it don't use it yeah. because it creates so many <laughs> unpredictable you know it there are many many production tricks out there and some of these tools are designed to condense a lot of tools into one thing which is, sounds like this is one of those where it allows you to have more than one compressor and then I know there are other people that use multiband compressors, which is like a really crazy compressor EQ hybrid. Right. I'll tell you, I those tools, they're for somebody else. I, I don't, I use very traditional methods and get good results. And I, so I, I personally don't use more than one compressor. I do use two compressors, actually. Let me correct myself. I use a compressor and I use a limiter. Right. So I'm using a compressor somewhere along the way. And a limiter at the at the end. So if you want to say that's two compressors, that's the extent to which I would do it. Yeah, no, but, I'm using a limiter at the end to bring everything back up. Okay. Back. Right. Yeah, right. but two compressors or more in a row. I've had one piece of gear that did that. I had this thing called the RNC, or the Really Nice Compressor. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it was stood for. It was made by a company called FMR Audio. And internally inside the box, in the magic of the circuitry, it said it had two or maybe even three compressors. But the thing that I liked about it is you didn't know. It was right. totally transparent. It still had a couple simple knobs. It didn't make it overcomplicated, and it sounded great. So anything that like this that has multiple compressors, it all comes down to how it's programmed and how it's designed and who develops the presets. If you plug these things in and it causes weird results, maybe just don't use it. I mean, it's it's for another reason, for another type of use, right? Than what you're using it right. for, I'm, yeah, the, you know. But I don't have personal experience with yeah, that. Tool. Yeah, and I and I don't believe in a lot of heavy processing, especially not up front. That anything, any processing that you can do, all your software can do it in post and do it non destructively. Right. So, you know, well, I, there's, there's comment, this, this com running debate. Uh, on the, especially like the ACX um, um, Facebook page about uh, people not meeting spec and having uh, their files kicked back, so they have to, to to redo it and reprocess it and and make sure that they're meeting spec, especially the RMS spec. Uh, a lot of people are trying to put it too high and make it hit that negative three dB top, which is just a target. It's not actually. Um, where it needs to be but a lot of people are missing the rm uh, rms spec because they don't understand it and, right. and acx doesn't do a really good job of explaining how to do it they give you the what but not the, the how, how right? and but so, that's what i do yeah. for a living by the way yeah that's <laughs> you can send me your audio and i will send you back a, a scheme a process a learning a tutorial to take whatever it is that you use your daw whatever it is and a, a repeatable, easy to use system to learn how to master audiobooks to spec chapter by chapter using your own tools. I've done it on just about every doll that's out there. And, you know, it's, it's really understanding how to use the limiter and using the right yeah. limiter for the job. It's not well, that Reaper. hard. I mean, I love Reaper. Yeah. I, I mean, I can do it with, it. I can do it with Reaper. Um, but it's learning how to use the, the, the problem with Reaper is it's got too many dang tools. It's overwhelmed <laughs> with, huge amounts of options it's yeah. it's insane every time i load it on somebody's system which compressor should, i don't which comp i don't know let me try let me, no not that one no not that one there's too many tools it just yeah, it no, kind of overwhelms I've, you with I've options it down for voiceover so it's yeah. you know 99 percent yeah. of that stuff you don't need 
No, yeah. it's totally that's true. Absolutely true. Yeah. And that's even before Waves has their sale and you buy everything in the cart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a bunch of freebies. Say you know, death yeah. by twenty nine dollar plugins. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. You know, any fury. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Who's that? I do have the uh, Apollo twin duo USB. Yeah. Uh which you you highly recommended, um George. Yeah, yeah. And uh, one of the videos that's floating around on YouTube is a way to use parallel compression for voiceover. It's the best I've ever sounded on that thing. Oh, there now we're go. talking about a whole other thing, which is yeah. parallel compression. Yeah, that's different. Now that's mixing a flat signal with the compressed signal and combining the two to get a certain sound. Again, tools that are designed by engineers for engineers that know how to make these things work. I'm an engineer, but I've never learned or really made use of parallel compression doesn't mean it's not gonna work for you and maybe it sounds freaking amazing i just know the ways i've been doing things work it gets people acx approved all the time and i haven't made use of some of those yeah. things so yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. and if you uh, just want to record raw you can everything that's in the apollo can be used inside of your daw as a vst plugin absolutely that. that is true every plugin can be used in post on that as well so yeah. A lot of options out there available to you guys. Yeah. We, we've actually had somebody in our studio. Eddie Furia has been with us. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if he has a question. Do you think he's got a question? I don't. I think they've answered everything. Sorry. You guys. <laughs> we answered everything? Yeah, everything. Wow. Oh, man. We're just good at what we do. Think of, yeah, you guys are busy. Trying to think of something. <laughs> All right. All right. Who else is in the Zoom room? And then we got we to gotta call it a night. But... No, I think we can call it a night unless, unless Tammy wants to say hi. That's the only one left that we... I don't think that we've heard from yet. You Unmute say Tammy. Hi, Tammy. Tammy, say hi. No, she, come on. There she is. Okay. Oh, I have her mic down. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tammy. Does that help? Yeah, that works. Yeah. How are you doing tonight? Yeah. Mic came loose. <laughs> Thanks for joining uh, us. No, Where I didn't are you have hailing a question. From? I was just uh, taking notes on everybody else's questions, but I will definitely next time. Well, it's great. Well, I mean, whatever, however you get something from the show tonight, whether you're just listening or participating. Thanks for joining us tonight and being here live with us. Thank you. Awesome. All righty. Who else is in there? I uh, think that I that's ran everybody. through the list. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, thank you all for your calls. Uh, it's been fun. It has been. And yeah. uh, and and again, we're you know we're we're going to change things up here starting January seventh. Uh, so uh, stay tuned for you know more details on that as over the next week mm -hmm. or so. So, so anyway, we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to call it a night right after this. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, OK, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves, but I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. All right. Well, that was fun. It was fun. I was really happy how that all worked out in the end, actually. Yeah. It worked out real smoothly. Yeah, little crackles here and there, but mm -hmm. it was great to see everybody in their home studio. It was. And asking those questions. Yeah. Um, uh, next week on this show, you're going to be in Seattle. I am going up to visit my kid who All now right. lives up in the area and, uh, I'll be staying with some friends. Actually, the friends I'm staying with, her husband is on the Windows development team. Yeah. So I'm going to try to get some questions. Good into, internet. About the audio, uh, about the audio side of Windows yeah. <laughs> while yeah. I'm there. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, we're going to, we're going to do the show from the, uh, voiceover meetup that's up there at the uh, Seattle VoiceOver Academy. All right. So that's thanks to um, uh, Sh Shana, Shana Pennington Baird, Baird, one of the contributors of the show, that was uh, that she's part of that. So that's going to be a lot of fun. All and right. And then, uh, then it's holiday time. Yes. You know, Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve both fall on Monday this year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, 
we're taking the rest of the year off after next week and uh, preparing for our new format starting January 7th when Tara Strong is scheduled to be with us, and that'll be fun. She'll be right here in the studio, hopefully not with all her dogs or anything. <laughs> uh, and then on January 21st, Larry Davis, uh, Man, who's a funny Larry guy. Larry Davis, dude, is unbelievably yeah. talented. You've heard his voice in the past on our old bumpers we used yeah. to run on the show. Yeah. Super great guy. Yes. Uh, we'd like to thank our donors of the week, people yes. like. We've got donors. We've, We've got, got donors. Lots. We've got lots and lots of donors. That to- that tab in my browser somehow got closed, and now I don't have my donors loaded. Okay. So well, you I'm know going who you to are. pull them up before we end the show tonight. I okay. Promise. All righty. Uh, hey, show us your booths. Yeah, this is not a booth. This is California right now. Uh, as I said, find a picture of palm trees and snow. That's California after a, a couple of a couple of heavy rainstorms. It snows up in the mountains here, so we wanted to show that off. Uh, send them in. Make sure they are in landscape, not portrait, uh, and show us what your booth looks like. Uh, that's you know what we're here for. We want to see how you guys are doing it. Uh, if you want to work with George, how do they do that? You head on over to georgethetech.com or georgethe.tech, and all my services are available for you right over there. All right, and if you'd like to work with me, you, look, it's great having choices. Uh, go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com and see all the fun stuff I do. And, of course, drop off your audio. For 25 bucks. I will un- analyze your audio in my specimen collection cup. I do have to get a plug-in for a podcast that I'm yeah. actually appearing on as a oh, guest. Really? Which really? is uh, called the Go Get It podcast. Right. Um, it's a, a new one that's a motivational one uh, produced by Corey Disson. And it's kind of fun to be on his show because... I met Corey before I even knew what voiceover was back in Philadelphia. Wow. He knew me from the way back days of like the late 90s. Hmm. So, um, so fun to be knowing that he's still in the voiceover world, doing a podcast and getting to be on his show. So go find the Go Get It podcast on iTunes and, you know, all those podcast thingamajigs. Right. All right. Hey, if you want to be in our studio like Eddie Furrier is, where's the the audience cam? Does it still work? Do I have to reboot it? <laughs> Let's see here. And his and his cute there he is. Son. Yeah, and his, and his cute son, sleeping, son. sleeping seven year old son who's with us. Oh, look at him. He he got something so for us, cute. and we're greatly appreciative, Eddie. That's, yeah, we really appreciate you guys that. It. All right, thank oh. you. Um, I got the donors. Oh, go for it. I got. Well, of course, Tracy H. Reynolds. Okay. Hey, Tracy. Um, going down the list here, uh, Andrew Kaufman. And Christy Burns. Thank yeah. you, Christy. Uh, Eric Aragoni, another f- lovely name of often week repeated. Week after week. <laughs> uh, Tracy H. Reynolds going back. Um, and now I've already looped again? Have I looped that quickly? Yeah, I have. So um, so many folks are doing little extra ways to support our show through our donations link on the website. Right. You can do a one-off or you can do a subscription for as little as a buck a month if you want. We appreciate that. And it's that. really helpful. All righty. Well, we need to thank our sponsors as well, like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. And uh, I was looking at the right spot. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VO to go go. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins, Collins Demos. And, of course, we need to thank the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the Betterment of Live Webcasting. Mm-hmm. Uh, our producer, Catherine Curridan. And Yay, uh, Catherine. Course, she's been working really hard getting us together for 2019. I know. Uh, Jack so Daniel so for chat room duty tonight. Uh, and, of course, our amazing technical director, who was Basically flawless Sharp as tonight. attack. Sue Merlino. Following great job. whatever we throw at her. <laughs> All righty. And, of course, Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Yep. Where is Lee? Have Penny? fun with those RC toys, yeah. Lee. All right. Well, happy holidays, everybody. And uh, we'll see you next week. George will be in Seattle. I'll be here. And we'll help you with your home voiceover studios here on mm-hmm. VoiceOver Body Shop. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or VO BS. Yes. Have a great week, everybody. <laughs>